after a tough workout, it's time to indulge. We went Chari Makan in Jalan Kudu area. First stop is Yongkei, one of the popular beef noodles in KL. There are a variety on the menu, mainly internal parts, tendon, shrimp, honeycomb, omasum, beef balls, and brisket. You can order individual bowl, or in our case, we ordered a little bit of everything to share. We learned that the broth is boiled for hours that result in a full flavor thick broth. I'm not a big fan of internal parts, but my friends seem to enjoy them. Next, we walk to ICC Kudu, one of the largest food court complex in the Kudu area. They are made up of stores relocated from the Indian market some years ago. We went there specifically to try out the popular chicken one pan, a store operated by a retired dim sum chef of Nanjing Oriental. We read in reviews on the buns being soft, below light with mildly aromatic diced chicken filling, with crunchy wood ear fungus and young ginger strips. We are about to find out. Okay, the buns live up to expectation with the approval given by our friends. It is excellent when paired with Hainan tea. It's now past 11 a.m. and we make our way to Ruby Dessert House, one of the popular Tongsui in KL. Only run by the fifth generation, the shop earns some limelight with the daring pledge that patrons don't have to pay if not satisfied with the food. In marketing, we call that snob appeal. Four variety of tongsui is available. Black sesame, peanut, almond, and walnut. They have steamed eggs custard as well. Each serving comes with tongsui art, just like coffee art. The shop's specialty is the black sesame tongsui, but most of us are more impressed with the almond variety. We went back to the shop again the next day after another hike. A testament that the tongsu is really good and live up to expectation. The location and further description of the places that we visited is at the description of this post. 